Hello, it's Rob from Fountain Pen Journey and uh, just wanted to uh, share with you a very quick video. Um, basically, it's pen maintenance. And if you buy fountain pen, pretty much doesn't matter what model it is, this is recommended best practice. It's something that you don't often hear, certainly if uh, you're completely new to the hobby as I was uh, in July 2017. I bought a or several cheap fountain pens from China and first time I used them I just stuck in any old cartridge, standard international cartridge and wrote with them and they were fine but sometimes in the uh, manufacturing process the nib, the feed, the plastic feed on the back they can all end up with machine oils on, things like that which can affect ink flow there can also be tiny little bits of particulate metal which are all part of the milling process um, from ma manufacturing the pen and they can block the feed so it can have all sorts of issues with ink flow ink uh, skipping where your line across the page suddenly sort of misses and then carries on so yeah just to get consistent feed uh, of ink flow through to the nib and down the nib it's good practice to flush your pens now I do this with all of my pens when I get them new um, there's two ways of doing it the obvious way for anyone who's just got one pen who wants to try it out is to use the cartridge converter that comes with the pen now I'm going to talk about this simply from the point of view of cheap Chinese pens. These almost always come with a uh, standard international cartridge converter, which is a little thing that pushes into the pen, into the section of the pen, you turn it, and there's a plunger that goes up and down inside the uh, cartridge converter, which pulls ink up. Um, what I've got here is a cup of hot water. This is hot water out of the tap, it's not boiling water, certainly don't do that. Um, but hot water from the tap is a good thing just to use to flush your pen. Yes, you can buy pen flush, which has got ammonia in. You can also use something like this, a little bit of advertising for fairy, washing up liquid. One drop, I'm not talking loads of washing up liquid in there, washing up liquid, detergent, that type of thing. One drop, just a smidge. And this is just to break the surface tension of any oils from the manufacturing process that um, that may be adhering to any of the surfaces inside the converter, in the plastic there, inside the section, and the feed, which is inside the pen there. You can see there, you've got the plastic feed, and then you've got the nib, so the metal. Um, if you put a little bit of detergent in, that can help things along even more. Definitely recommended, but not something that is absolutely essential if you're an absolute beginner. And the way to flush your nib is simply taking off the barrel, as I've done, and rotate that so that the cartridge converter piston plunger goes all the way down and insert the entire nib into the water. And as you can see, Turn it, and it's drawn up the water. Turn it down, it expels. Turn it up. It's almost a full fill there. There's a tiny little bubble at the top, but yeah. What I'm going to do with this water, it's just out of the uh, camera thing, is empty that by turning the cartridge converter into the kitchen sink. So you do this. Time after time, and with a new pen, I would recommend doing this each fill. Do it oh, as many times as you were really able to do. Um, what I find is, yeah, okay, you could probably do it maybe ten times, and it's okay. But you know, the more the more the merrier. Um, and it's a laborious process because these cartridge converters don't hold a huge amount of ink or water so this process can be quite a lengthy process and you're doing lots of twisting and turning and twisting and emptying it's very very tedious so I invested in one of these things it's a bulb syringe 
um, got it for about five pounds from Amazon and it's for basically you fill it with warm water and if you've got earwax or something this is clean by the way I haven't used this on my ears or anyone else's and it's a soft bulb nothing more to it and I just insert this expel the air insert this into this cup this will suck up and oh, that's taken nearly half of that cup if I did this using the, internet, the standard international cartridge converter I'd be here for hours so what I'm going to do is just tap that out there so we've got any excess water out so I'm left with the nib and the section so with my bulb syringe filled with water and detergent or if you're using pen flush quite simply insert quite deeply, don't force it because obviously you're going <laughs> you'd be hard pushed to but you know you can stress the, pro the plastic of the uh, section you don't want to do any cracking or any uh, flaring of this area because it's going to stop the pen from fitting together correctly I'll just move the camera over here so you can see let's readjust that there we go hold it, obviously if you don't hold your section you're going to blast the nib off and it's probably going to damage the uh, nib and it will never write again. As you can see there's water already leaking through the feed and I give the bulb a really hard squeeze. Hold it in you can see all that water flooding out and that is taking any manufacturing residues, metal particulates, oils, things like that and this is doing a much much better, faster flush than you can do just by using the cartridge converter alone. I mean this is it's like flushing the pen about 50 times. It's fantastic and I would really really recommend investing in one of these bulb syringes. Um, certainly as far as pen maintenance goes you do need to do this to your pens on a regular basis. If you use your pen a lot um, I'd certainly recommend doing it maybe once a month um, if you change inks then absolutely yes you must flush your pen because some inks really don't behave well when they're mixed in together so all you need is a little bit of residue from one and well yeah it can play havoc you can have all sorts of corrosion issues I'm not saying that it's necessarily going to happen but you can have corrosion issues just filled up the bulb syringe again give it another big squeeze keep the constant pressure there and that water is coming out of there nicely um, so yeah if you're going to change your inks then you're going to need to do this it's an absolute must and I will get on to filling a fountain pen in a minute and explain how that goes with the standard international converter it takes a fair bit of pressure on your hand I mean you've got to keep the pressure up I wouldn't recommend sucking things back up into the bulb I mean, you don't really want to end up with a load of contamination inside the bulb. So I'll just keep doing this. I mean, this is a good old flush. This is going to clear out anything that's in there. This is a brand new pen. I've never used it before. So, I'm getting to the end of the bulb, squeezing it. Still squeezing it, still water coming out. I mean, if you pull the bulb syringe out at this point, you're just going to blast water all over the place. There we go. And I have used all of that water. I can give this another quick squidge. Get rid of that. So, one last go. Three of these bulb syringes with hot water. Um, I'll just make a note. There are some pens which have a feed, that's the plastic bit uh, that goes underneath the nib. That's the black plastic bit that you can see there. Um, that can be made of a material called ebonite. Now it's sort of it's plastic, if you like. Um, you don't see it on modern fountain pens. Most modern fountain pens have plastic feeds, there's nothing special about them. Uh, older pens often do have ebonite feeds and also some of the more speciality modern pens they can come with them because it's quite a traditional nice thing to have the good thing about ebonite is that if it's not 
if your feed isn't working correctly and it's not behaving well with the nib, um, you can heat it up in hot water and mould it a bit with your fingers. It's not part of this video. I'm, I don't have any uh, ebonite, and, uh, ebonite feed pens, so I'm not going to even talk about that. But, you know, be aware if you start doing this with an old pen and you're using stupidly hot water, there is a possibility that you might actually sort of alter the way that the nib and the feed behave, so just be cautious of that. So I'll squeeze out any excess water from the bulb, so that's nice, nice and dry and clean for next time you use it. I'll move the camera back. Oh, this doesn't make your car sick. There we go. Just tap on any water. Now, what I do, because I've got the cartridge converter here, I'm going to give that a bit of a wipe down as well. Wind it up and then I'm going to dry a bit of kitchen towel and blow it out. The more absorbent the kitchen towel, the better. So that's nice and dry. Now the feed and the section and the nib will be holding a fair amount of water in there. You can't get it out. I mean, you could leave it sort of stud like this for several hours overnight, something like that, and it will dry it out. But, you know, practicality, modern day living, I just hold the feed gently on the paper and it's sucking the water into the paper and I turn it over then so I've got basically writing with the pen sort of with my fingers upside down and there's a cartridge converter rolling over there and you can see how much water is coming out of this just dabbing it onto the paper so you want to get all of the water out of there otherwise as soon as you put ink in it it's going to mix with it you're going to end up with watery ink for a while um, not a great thing to have That is dry. Just make sure there's nothing else in there. Give it a bit of a shake. Still a little bit of a line. A little bit. You can see it takes a little bit of a while. I'm not applying any pressure here. Really just letting the water be pulled out from the feed and the nib just through a bit of its own pressure and of course the capillary action of the paper is just drawing that water out. Remember I'm putting no pressure on this so it's not like I'm trying to flex it out of there. There we go, we have one dry nib and feed and section. So, you've got a fountain pen, you've got a cartridge converter, I'll just uh, make a quick comment, I mean obviously if you've got a fountain pen uh, recently or, or you're thinking of buying one, you've never had one before, um, if you choose one make sure you get the right type of ink cartridges, so this is quite a fortunate little Chinese pen because almost all of the Chinese pens that I know of anyway, Jin Hao's, Wing Songs, things like that. If they happen to be a cartridge converter pen, they all take standard international ink cartridges, which is brilliant because you don't have to mess around with them trying to find proprietary ink cartridges or proprietary ink cartridge converters. So this can be used with any bottled ink or standard international cartridge. So it's quite straightforward. So push fit, just friction fit, nothing special, you don't have to tighten it or turn it or lock it in place, it just pushes in. So this is now ready to be inked up. In my videos I will refer to things being inked up. Basically it's filled with ink. So what we've got here is Waterman Intense Black. It's very nice ink, it's black. There's nothing more you want to say about it, give it a little bit of a shake. I don't know when I last used this, probably fairly recently. It's Already feeling a little bit empty <laughs> these days. So, to fill a pen, unscrew the cap. Make sure you're not going to make an awful mess. So, don't go 
pulling the cartridge converter out and sticking that in the ink bottle is no point. The whole idea of, an, of a um, fountain pen is to dip the entire thing in. Now I'm going to have to look over the top of the camera for this because quite honestly I need to see what I'm doing. So that goes below the level of the ink in the bottle. And it is a bit of a messy process, I've got to admit. And you turn the cartridge converter up. And that's given a pretty good fill. Not all the way to the top, so the standard practice is to squirt that all back out into the ink bottle. Turn it up so the piston rises and draws up more ink. You see, this time we've got much, much more ink. And I don't know whether it's a superstition or a look, but I always find that it fills best on the third fill. You flush everything out. I mean, the ink will behave well in the pen, better than water. That's what it's designed to do. And that will have now filled, which it has. We've got a full fountain pen. So, next thing to do is dab off the nib in the section. It's not a filthy process. I mean, it's not... It's not absolutely awful. Yes, it's messy. You just dab it off. Yep, there we go. The ink's flowing out of there already. So, give that a bit of a wipe. Wipe off the nib. Make sure it's all nice and clean. There we go. Yes, of course, you get inky fingers. This is the whole thing about using fountain pens. You get inky fingers. There's nothing is wrong with having inky fingers. So that simply screws on there, the barrel's now screwed on. Quick test to make sure everything's alright, there's no water in there, yep, and that's pulling quite a lot of ink out of the pen, very absorbent paper. That is it. One inked up or filled fountain pen. Don't forget to cap your ink bottle, because if you knock that over, nobody's, nobody in the house is going to be happy with you. Pop it back in the box, keep it out of sunlight because that can degrade ink. And there you go, one ready to use fountain pen. Some fountain pens uh, may take, if you insert a cartridge uh, into them, may take a moment or two, 30 seconds or so, to, for the uh, ink to flow into the nib and the feed. Um, so don't expect an immediate thing. I mean, obviously, something like this, I've just inked it up. So the whole feed has been in the ink. So, I mean, <laughs> realistically, you didn't even have to fill the, fill the um, cartridge converter. You could just use it as a dip pen. Dip your pen in the ink pot. But, let's face it, we're not in Victorian eras these days. So, not going to do that. So, that, I hope, was a useful little video. And you now know how to fill a standard international cartridge converter pen. Thanks for watching.